Hey you pals, Disney Devotee here. Welcome back to my channel. Last week I reviewed Disney Zombies and I was pleasantly surprised by it. Today I'm taking a look at Zombies 2. Let's get into it. Disney Devotee as always, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe as it helps my little baby channel out so much and it helps you to not miss one single upload. I've been on a journey the last few months watching a bunch of Disney Channel musicals and then ranking them to help determine the ultimate Disney Channel musical. So far, I've watched all of the Descendants films as well as Camp Rock and Camp Rock 2. Obviously, I am now working my way through the Zombies movies, and then I will be wrapping things up with the High School Musical Trilogy. I may have some Halloween videos dispersed in between those as well, as we are almost to spooky season. <laughs> Which, by the way, if you have any TGIF Halloween episodes you would like me to review, let me know in the comments down below. Um, TGIF, if you are too young to remember, was a block of programming on Friday nights that had a whole bunch of sitcoms that were family friendly. Boy Meets World, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, Full House, Family Matters, on and on and on. Their Halloween episodes especially were particularly good, or if not good, at least a lot of fun. I remember growing up and being so excited to watch the Halloween episodes every year, so I think it's going to be a really fun video. I'm either going to do a couple where I talk about them or just one. I'm not sure. But anyway, please leave your suggestions down below. I would so appreciate it. But I am getting off topic. <laughs> Like I said earlier, I actually really enjoyed the first Zombies movie. Was it a masterpiece? No, of course not. I wouldn't really say any of these movies are masterpieces, but it genuinely surprised me. So, before I tell you what I thought about Zombies 2, let me first tell you what happens in Zombies 2. Long before Seabrook was a town, the area was inhabited by werewolves. As humans moved into their territory, they were forced into hiding, and they lost their precious moonstone. Fast forward a couple hundred years, and Addison is working hard to train the new recruits at cheer camp. Meanwhile, Zed is putting together a plan to ask Addison out to prawn, aka prom. By the way, their school mascot is a shrimp, hence prawn. I don't think I mentioned that in the previous video, so there you go. <laughs> Anyway, Zed surprises the bus full of cheerleaders heading home from camp with his big announcement asking Addison out to prawn. Unfortunately, though, things go a little haywire and the bus crashes into the woods. The cheerleaders see some of the werewolves, which makes the town of Seabrook panic. Anti-monster laws are put back into place, which understandably upsets the zombies. <laughs> Bucky, Addison's cousin and the captain of the cheerleading team, announces that he is running for class president. This is exciting news for Addison, as if he wins, she might be able to become the captain of the cheerleading team. Bucky's news also encourages Zed to run for class president, as he wants to help fight anti-monster rhetoric. The werewolves enroll at Seabrook High so they can talk to Addison. You see, they wear moonstones on their necklaces, which helps them have their werewolf powers, I guess. <laughs> and the moonstone's power is dying. They need to locate their big moonstone, and it was foretold a girl with white hair would lead them to it, so they believe that Addison is going to save them. Addison is given a moonstone necklace meant for the Great Alpha, and they tell her if she puts it on, she will turn into a werewolf if she is the one from the prophecy. She tries to tell Zed about it, and he's not very keen on this whole werewolf thing. Unbeknownst to her, he steals her moonstone necklace, which actually turns out to be a really bad idea because the moonstone interacts with his Z-band, and it causes him to go into full-on zombie mode 
during the class president debate. Sadly, this costs him the election. Meanwhile, the werewolves head to the power plant to stop the demolition because they believe their moonstone is buried underneath it. The power plant is going to be destroyed, which is not good news for the werewolves because this will also destroy their moonstone. Madison brings a bunch of fellow Seabrook high schoolers to protest the demolition of the power plant, and they successfully get the demolition of the power plant to be delayed. This is when Addison decides in her full power to try on the moonstone necklace. Only, she's very disappointed to find she does not turn into a werewolf. On the night of prawn, the power plant is accidentally demolished, which somebody is losing their job, am I right? <laughs> and this causes the ground to split open at the high school, where the moonstone is revealed. So all the high schoolers work together to save the moonstone, thereby saving the werewolves' lives. Everyone celebrates and Zed and Addison kiss. At the very ending of the movie, they hint at what is going to happen in Zombies 3. Aliens. So what did I think of Zombies 2? Well, let's analyze it by looking at the songs and choreography, the performances, and the storyline. For starters, I'd have to say I did not think the songs in this movie were nearly as good as the songs in the first Zombies film. They're not as bad as, say, the songs from the second Camp Rock, in my opinion, but they're not exactly earworms either. They just didn't feel as catchy nor as memorable for me. Like, as soon as I finished watching the film, I was not able to remember any of the songs I had just heard in the movie, which is never a good sign. <laughs> that being said, there were a few standout songs, or songs that I at the very least liked. The first song, We Got This, is very high energy, it's a lot of fun, and it does a great job at catching the audience up on what's been going on since the last movie. Also, the ballad, I Gotta Find Where I Belong, is honestly a beautiful song with a very relatable message. I mean, who among us has not felt at some point in our lives like we didn't fit in, we didn't belong? And all of us growing up have to go on this journey to figure out our identity and who we are. If you are a highly sensitive person or HSP like I am, then you quite often go through life feeling like you don't fit in. <laughs> Which reminds me, I actually really want to do a whole video about HSP Disney characters. I think that would be a really interesting topic to delve into and dissect. And just kind of really quickly boiling down the definition of an HSP or a highly sensitive person, that is someone who can be very easily overstimulated by certain lighting or sounds or lots of stimuli. They are very empathetic and very observant of others. So anyway, that is on the docket for some time in the future, but I do have a lot of video ideas. <laughs> so we'll see when I get to it. Anyway, that was off topic, but I do think that Addison might be an HSP, a highly sensitive person. So I just thought that was something that was interesting to discuss in this video. And it might be cheating because this song was in the first Zombies movie, but I really enjoyed the reprise of Someday because that was my favorite song in the first film. So obviously I was happy to hear that one again. <laughs> and I think it's the best song out of probably all the zombie films, but you know, I haven't seen the third one yet, so I guess it's a little too soon to make that call, but it's going to be hard to top that one for me. <laughs> choreography for me was still absolutely stellar. I mean, the choreography and gymnastics they had going on in the first song alone was just absolutely fantastic. You know, a revolving climbing wall and zip lining. I mean, they just go over the top with the choreography and I really appreciate that and it felt fresh, 
new and creative. When it comes to musicals, while I do love ballads, I also really love over-the-top, big group musical numbers, like We Got This, the opening song of Zombies 2. It reminds me a lot of old-style, kind of Busby Berkeley movies. It also reminds me a lot of the kind of stunts the absolute genius and master Gene Kelly used to do in his musicals. And if you don't know who Busby Berkeley and Gene Kelly are, but you enjoy musicals, I highly encourage you to look them up, especially Gene Kelly. Busby Berkeley changed the landscape of how movie musicals were filmed, and so did Gene Kelly. They were both kind of in different eras, Busby Berkeley in the 30s, Gene Kelly kind of the 40s and 50s. Um, I'm hoping at least some of you have heard of Gene Kelly. <laughs> if you are unfamiliar with his work, I would start with Singing in the Rain. That's one of my absolute favorite movie musicals. I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. He was just a master. Thanks for sticking around while I was geeking out there for a little bit. I love movies, but movie musicals especially have my heart. Looking at performances, again, I have no complaints. I feel like the returning cast are just as good in this movie as they were in the first one, and I thought the new werewolves that were added also did a good job. I might have some complaints about the storyline or how certain characters were written, but acting and the performers themselves, I have no complaints. They did just fine. That being said, let's take a look at the storyline, and I have to say this was definitely the weakest aspect for me in Zombies 2. As a concept, I love the idea of adding werewolves into the Zombies universe. I am a huge fan of the old Universal monster movies, and the Wolfman is probably my absolute favorite, second only to The Bride of Frankenstein. Truthfully, I hated how the werewolves were done in this movie. Their aesthetic did not work. <laughs> they did not look like werewolves, I'm sorry. I just, I didn't believe it. Um, it would have been cool if maybe when the moon is full, you know, they actually turn into werewolves or even wolves you know? Um, or they could have even said because the moonstone necklaces are losing their power, they look more like humans, just something. But I didn't buy that they were werewolves. They almost looked more like vampires, you know, like vampires wearing bohemian clothes. <laughs> When I first saw them, I was like, what in the twilight is this? But hey, at least in twilight, the werewolves would turn into wolves. And I can't believe I am defending twilight. <laughs> I also was not a huge fan of how Zed treated Addison in this movie. I mean, stealing her moonstone just... That is totally not his style, in my opinion. It felt very out of character. He is very prejudiced towards the werewolves, which again, I feel like is out of character. He's trying to teach them to fit in and be more human and... I don't know. I, I just, I didn't care much for that because one of the things in the first movie was Zed is showing the humans how the zombies are different, but also the same and accepting and embracing those differences. He dislikes the werewolves so much that it damages his relationship with Addison and obviously things get mended, but it just overall didn't work for me. I hated the friction between the two of them. I don't know. These movies always have to have these couples fight and it felt so out of character for them. Not that people in healthy relationships aren't going to have their disagreements, but the lying and the sneaking, it just, I didn't like it. It sent a bad message. <laughs> And of course, in the first Zombies, I really loved the message of acceptance and equality. It had so much heart. Zombies 2 really lacks heart. There's not a core message, in my opinion. It's kind of even just the same message from the first movie repeated in this one, but done in a very poor way and a very bland way. It just, it didn't have that same 
heart. And maybe the message of this second movie is Addison trying to find her identity and figuring out who she is, but I don't know, it's just kind of sloppily done. <laughs> and to be honest, I had forgotten a huge chunk of Zombies 2 when I sat down to write the script. I was like, okay, I guess it's about poorly done werewolves and a blonde girl who has every privilege and advantage in her life complaining about how she doesn't fit in. <laughs> And I know I said I loved the song, Gotta Find Where I Belong, and that she's an HSP, and yada, yada, yada. But on the other hand, it is really overdone. This whole poor Addison aspect, it's just kind of icky. It just kind of gets annoying after a while. <laughs> I'm not saying that if you live a privileged life, you're not allowed to feel like an outcast or feel like you don't fit in. Not at all, because as I said earlier, we all go through those kinds of things. However, because she is the pretty, privileged cheerleader with a boyfriend and a happy home life, it just feels unrelatable. You know, Addison in that way is unrelatable. When she adopts the werewolf aesthetic, it's really giving it's not a phase mom vibes. <laughs> like I said, the introduction of the werewolves could have been way cooler. I mean, like a Disney monster high, classic universal monster universe kind of vibe. And it fell flat. They just didn't nail it to me. <laughs> it was lacking the heart of the first movie. And it's just kind of like they tried to repeat what happened in the first movie. Like lightning in a bottle. And my wife and I talk all the time about lightning in a bottle moments. Let's not try to recreate those moments. But instead, make new ones. Choreography aside, their attempts at making this movie feel bigger ended up making it feel overstuffed and messy. Me when I'm leaving a Chinese buffet. <laughs> Where would I rank Zombies 2? Well, I still liked it more than Camp Rock and Camp Rock 2, but not nearly as much as the rest of the musicals I've reviewed so far on this channel. Therefore, Zombies 2 lands directly above Camp Rock 2, a huge drop compared to the first Zombies movie. Next week, I will be reviewing Zombies 3, and I really hope I like it more than this second one. I think Aliens make sense. It's a fun addition to this universe, you know, 1950s, kitschy sci-fi. You could do a lot with it, and I don't want to have my hopes up too high, so I guess I'm going in hoping for the best, but expecting the worst. <laughs> with that being said, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you real soon. Bye bye